At Chapman University's commencement ceremony this year, physicist Professor Paul Davies will be speaking to the new graduates. Orange County Register Science Editor Gary Robbins met Davies at Chapman's Fish Interfaith Center to talk about the physicist Templeton Prize winning work on the relationship between science and religion. Professor Davies, uh, in your Templeton Prize address, you recall that Einstein once said that the thing which interested him most is whether God has any choice in his creation. Do you believe in God? And if the answer is yes, do you think he had any choice in his creation? Uh, first of all, I don't believe in any sort of God that uh, the people who are viewing this video might uh, have in mind, uh, and nor did Einstein. So Einstein professed a cosmic uh, religious feeling by which he meant that when we use science to examine the universe, we're impressed not just by its majesty, but also by its subtlety and its ingenuity. Uh, and what he was referring to in his question was whether the universe could have been otherwise, whether it has to have the laws it does uh, by some sort of logical necessity. And if it doesn't, why this universe? Why those laws? And in particular, we'd like to know why laws that permit the emergence of complexity of life and ultimately beings like ourselves who can make sense of the universe. That continues to interest me and many of my colleagues very deeply and the glib answer to that is that there's not just one universe, there's a vast multiplicity of them with random laws and only in that tiny handful where the laws come out just right for life will beings like ourselves emerge and think uh, aren't we lucky and uh, uh, it's all been set up for our benefit, but in fact we're just winners in a gigantic cosmic lottery. And there are many other uh, possible interpretations of this strange fact that the universe is unusually biofriendly. I call it the Goldilocks enigma. Uh, can a person believe in the scientific uh, method of inquiry and believe in the existence of God? I don't think uh, in the existence of any sort of uh, popular God that involves um, intervening in the world's affairs. And this is an absolutely crucial point. Scientists believe that the universe can be explained by laws of nature, uh, so any uh, idea of a cosmic magician who can uh, intervene and prod around, move atoms about, tinker with genomes and so on, is complete anathema to scientists. But if uh, by uh, this strange word God, which I hate to use because it has so many different meanings, if what you, you are referring to is is there some sort of rational order or scheme of things? I think you can't be a scientist without believing that the universe is put together in this rational and, and ordered manner, and the job of the scientist is to uncover that order. You've said that a lot of people are hostile to science because it demystifies nature. Mm. I understand uh, that that's not logical, or it's not logical in my mind, but do you understand the viewpoint of the people who find it that they essentially don't want to demystify nature. Do you yeah, so some people prefer mystery. They don't want to delve too much. Uh, they sometimes think it's dangerous. Uh, sometimes they think it uh, robs uh, the world of its uh, romance or something of that sort. Uh, I've never shared that because it seems to me that as a scientist uh, working at the cutting edge, I know that every time we come to understand something about the universe, uh, it reveals just how marvelous, subtle and ingenious and beautiful it really is and that you cannot understand that level of beauty and subtlety without having some understanding of science and mathematics and the fact that we might uh, uh, all celebrate uh, the beauty of a, of a sunset, and that I can share in that as well, uh, doesn't diminish uh, in any way if you know something about the underlying physical processes that give rise to that, that, that makes it look even more magnificent. So I, I see science as a voyage of discovery that exposes the true, deep, subtle wonder of the universe in a manner that simply does not come across uh, from other modes of thought. Do you have a soul? And if you do, what happens to it when you die? <laughs> I don't think I've got a soul, and I don't think anything happens when I die. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. I really appreciate it.